Hi, my name's Andy Sykes. I'm an illustrator and animator, and I teach animation at universities here in the UK. Why not check out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find animation and illustration by me, as well as more lessons in Flash and After Effects. Cheers. Hi, and welcome to my tutorial on how to create kind of crest of a wave on the front of a boat using the wave warp effect in After Effects and drawing in Flash. So if you haven't watched my introduction to the wave warp effect, please do watch that. Otherwise, you're going to be completely baffled by this entire tutorial. And if you don't know how to use After Effects, please do check out my After Effects tutorials on my website, hexjibber.com. So let's start off by having a look at what my final animation looks like. The kind you'd see at the front of a boat when it was cutting through the ocean waves. You can ignore the green background. That's just there to make the animation stand out a little bit. So let's jump into After Effects and I can show you how I created this. What we've got is two shape layers and only one of them has actual animation on it. So I've drawn this little curved shape using the pen tool and I've colored it in blue. And you can see it's got a kind of arc that reaches a sort of little bit of a round point at this part here. So I've created that using the pen tool. If you've ever used Illustrator or created things using the pen tool in Flash, you'll be familiar with this. And I've applied a wave warp effect to it. Let's turn that on. And we can see that the beginning of the animation, we've got a wave type of semicircle. We've got a wave height of 27 and a wave width of 94. The direction is 47 degrees. You can see I've chosen 47 because it matches my wave. The wave speed is minus three, so it's traveling to the left and it's moving quite slowly. There's no pinning, no phase. Put the anti-aliasing set to low, but you can have it on high if you like. And for this one, I found that the, the best way to posterize time was to use a frame rate of nine. Now, Again, if you're baffled, please do check out my wave warp tutorial and you'll understand what I'm talking about. But there's this kind of messy edge at the bottom which is ruining my animation and totally killing my buzz. So what I've done is I've created another shape layer to mask it. So we've got this kind of nice cut off and we've just got our animation really nice and smooth at the bottom. This is something you have to do with wave warp quite often because when you have the settings ramped up quite high, you're going to get these sort of bizarre artifacts at the bottom. But one other thing I've done, which we've not looked at before, is I've actually animated these wave height and wave width values so that they change over the course of time. And the reason I did that was because it just made my animation work a little bit better. It was kind of an organic process figuring this out. Um, and it's something that you can try if your animation isn't quite working. So we start off with a wave height of 27. It goes up when we reach the middle of our animation to 63. And again, these values are very arbitrary. It's just me sliding them up and down to get the effects that I want. And as we move forwards to the end, our wave height is 32. Let's take a look at the wave width. It starts off at 94. In the middle, it's 82, and then it goes up to 93 at the end, ready to loop with the 94 at the beginning. So as we move through time towards the middle, the height gets higher and the width gets thinner. So that we have this. And then as we move forward even further, the height gets lower and the width gets higher or thicker, should I say. So if you've looked at my After Effects tutorials or you've learned After Effects in some other way, you'll know what these are. They're keyframes that tell us what the wave height, wave width is. I've set these keyframes. Again, if you don't know how to do that, check out my After Effects tutorials and you'll know what I'm talking about. So there we go. That's how I created this particular effect. You can see that I've trimmed the work area down to just 17 frames. That's where I've worked out that the loop is. 
So this entire sequence is only 17 frames long. I've exported that using the uh, media encoder queue. That's what you should use if you're using CC. If you're using CS6 and below, you want to add to the render queue and export as PNG sequence. So let's take a look at that in Flash. I'm going to open up this one here. And what we've got is a graphic symbol on the timeline. And I've got two instances of it on the timeline there. So what I've done is copied one by Command C and Command V, pasted it, and gone Modify, Transform, Flip Horizontal, and positioned it over here. Really nice and simple. I'm going to delete that one. So let's dive in and take a look at this wave and see how I've constructed it. So you can see here, I've got the guide. What I've done is I've brought it in, I've traced it using modify trace bitmap. I've made it black. I did that so it was easy to trace over, no other reason. And on a separate layer, I've just copied that black silhouette and used the lasso tool to create this sort of cell shaded effect. Really nice and simple, makes it look nice and hand drawn. I could tweak the angles of the wave a little bit and see if I turn both layers on, there's the odd bit that I've changed very slightly. If you don't know how to do cell shading, check out my cell shading tutorial on my website, hextuber.com. Just to give you a little taste of how I do it, you use the lasso tool here, select an area, and then just change the color. There you go. Really nice and easy, but do check out that cell shading tutorial so you know how to do this. And I've got all of these keyframes inside my splash loop shading symbol. And because it's a graphic symbol, it's looping very nicely on the timeline. You can see that I've added a couple of little bits of extra foam just to make it look a bit more dynamic. Let's just double click on that again, just to check it out. So you can see it starts here and then moves further on in the same direction as the wave. So the wave is kind of chucking it over its shoulder and then it ends up down here and then disappears. So there we go. That's how to create a really nice kind of round crest of a wave using After Effects and drawing over it in Flash. I'll see you in the next lesson where I'll show you another way of doing water and waves using After Effects and Flash. I'll see you there. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Next up, why not take a look at my website, hextuber.com, where you can find out more about my self-published books, the Hextuber Coloring and Activity Book and the Hextuber Anti-Revision Book. They're both suitable for kids and adults alike and are well worth checking out.